Namo Adidafa. Good morning. It's April 27th, and we're here for our daily practice check-in. Listen, listen, listen. This beautiful sound calls us back to our true home. This morning we're reciting the first mindfulness training. Aware of the suffering caused by the destruction of life, I vow to cultivate compassion and learn ways to protect the lives of people, animals, plants, and minerals. I am determined not to kill, not to let others kill, and not to condone any act of killing in the world, in my thinking or in my way of life. This morning we're continuing to read chapter 3 of Ajahn Suchito's book, Kama and the End of Kama. We'll begin the section on programming, body, mind, and rationality. We begin meditation practice by extending a steady awareness over the body while it is sitting, walking, standing, reclining, and in its ongoing process of breathing in and out. We put aside the more temporary issues and circumstances, and we attend to our body-mind system. What becomes clear with introspection is how dynamic this system is. The body's sensations throb and change, and its energies flush and flow. On the mental domain, moods swing, thoughts race and spark off memories, plans, which mean we're hardly ever completely with what we're doing now. What gets bundled together as my body and my mind is really an ongoing dynamic of sensations, moods, and impulses that slow down, speed up, and change all the time. Bodily intelligence gives us a sense of location, but we're only with that for necessary moments because the emotional intelligence is meanwhile telling us how we are, and the rational faculty is telling us what we should or can't do. These intelligences interact. Moods and thoughts send flushes or even shocks into the body's energy system and vice versa. Sometimes a burst of irritation or fear will cause some tightening or the notion of having lots of things to do generates a spin in which we lose awareness of the body. And although this stuff seems to be me, it has no lasting substance. The substantiality is just created by the ongoing blur and interplay of bodily and mental energies, like the apparently solid disk that is created by the blades of a spinning fan. These interplaying energies are our bodily, mental, emotional, and rational programs, Sankara. Programs are coded instructions that we associate with computer software, but they're not just a modern invention, far from it. The capacity to reason and use logic is a program, and just as our rational mind gets programmed to formulate plans and reasons, the affective mind is programmed to be affected by feelings and impressions, and to formulate impulses and responses. The body is also programmed in how it functions, and in generating and circulating energy around breathing in and out. These are the functional programs that are established by the life force, Ayu Sankara. On these elementary bases, more complex programs, further Sankara, get built. That is, the Sankara of thinking gets programmed into particular attitudes and ways of thinking, and our emotional program of liking and disliking gets fine-tuned to a range of responses. Out of the ongoing nature of all that patterning, 
Another level of program interprets all that as me, mine, myself. That interpretation then creates a center for subjective bias, inclination, and aversion that gives rise to complex behavior. All of these behaviors, patterns, and programs bound up with survival, biases, and stress are called sankhara. The sankhara programs are both active, in which intention, the urge to do, gets the process going, and resultant, and that once established, these programs become each individual's normal patterns of thinking, emotionally responding, and their normal sense of body energy. Thus, sankhara program are behavior and are the carriers of kama. To use an analogy, if you clear a path through undergrowth, a, a pattern has been created that has the resultant tendency to encourage others to walk that way. Follow that path enough times and you've got a highway, an established program. Like cars on a road, soon there's a lot of traffic going down that road that don't go any other way. Similarly in life, as a result of attitudes and biases, our thinking and acting follow a habitual track. If we have always reacted in a certain way, say to dogs or crowds or not getting what we want, then that reaction gets fixed as a real and unalterable fact that dogs are horrible or that we have a problem with dogs. Our emotions don't go any other way as far as dogs are concerned. That's the program around canines. As this program gets set, the impressions impression gets established that I have those attitudes and behaviors. Furthermore, if that program gets really locked, it gives rise to the assumption that this is me and I can't or won't change. That resultant pattern, that self-view, becomes an identity. And that identity is an enormously significant piece of programming. It becomes the basis for further action. Say, I avoid dogs, or I get tense if I'm in the same room as one. And that's just a tiny piece of me. Therefore, at a range of levels, patterns and program are the medium for the actions and the effects that characterize us. This is me, this is my way, and I stand on this. The aim of meditation, in fact, of all Dhamma practice, is to get free from programs and from encoding new ones. That's the program of meditation. As a paradox suggests, practice entails using the mind in particular ways to counteract negative uh, uh, programs, generate more skillful ones, and to see through and uproot ones that are based on ignorance. The support of meditation is that as it calms the surface sankhara of thoughts and emotions, underlying biases, hankering, resistance, and confusion get revealed. With further steadying and re relinquishment of bias, the mind can come to rest and purity. That's the practice. However, it's a deep process. Some of these afflictive programs are latent rather than active, and rather like seeds in dry soil, they only sprout when the rain falls. When our inner system is warm and sunny, it may seem that we don't have any tendencies to ill will or sense desire, but it may well be the case that they're lying dormant. Therefore, to really be a benefit, meditation is something you undertake as a process to expose and resolve the patterning, come rain, come shine. May all beings be well, may all beings be happy, may all beings be peaceful. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. Thank you for joining me this morning.